Christmas, a time of joy, filled with spending time with loved ones, making memories, sharing laughs, and giving gifts. Truly the greatest time of the year. But what happens when gift giving goes horribly wrong? When one innocent gift causes more harm than good? That's what we are here to talk about, when Christmas becomes a haunting nightmare. This is the 12 Days of Spookmas. Okay, welcome to the last day! We've changed our clothes twice! Three times, actually. I'm a snake. I hope you guys are excited for Christmas or whatever the hell you celebrate. Why are you talking like that? I don't know. You're stressing me out. <laughs> <laughs> I like how I'll sit all the way on my butt and then I'm really short and you're way taller than me <laughs> and then I'm sitting like this and then you're like, I'm this tall. A poem and plopper lady. Put books on my head. What just popped? I don't know. 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 <laughs> Anyway, this is the last day, so you guys won't see us until next year. Wah, wah. But don't worry, because we have a lot of content coming to you in January. We have the two videos that we filmed earlier this year and never posted. Man, I can't believe we're almost coming up on a year of doing Serial Killer Monthly. In February, it'll be a year. Oh, boys, we need to celebrate. Have a serial killer party? I was just gonna say go out to eat, but... <laughs> I don't really know if a serial killer party would be. We get little bowls that look like a skull. We have a little egg game yeah. feast. <laughs> get a some ground beef, put it in a blender, and call ourselves Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to tell you guys that I hope you have a great Christmas. My voice is. I going hope out. you guys have a great Christmas. <laughs> And a happy new year because we won't see you again until January, but don't worry, we will be back in January for some crazy stuff. We have two cult videos coming to you. We will have serial killers, we will have more haunted places. You guys have loved the most haunted places, so we can make that, a, we're gonna make that a series and just do most haunted places in every state. We, 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 we're gonna have urban legends. We're gonna have vlogs, we're gonna travel places, Jordan will be back with more cemeteries, um, we will go to Springdale again, there will be lots of stuff coming to you. If you guys want to, you can subscribe, if you're not already. I don't know how y'all like watching us. <laughs> oh god, I had this moment in a dream. Oh god! Did I do this? You did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared now. Uh, put the, put the, the timeline thing's happening again. What's gonna happen? I don't know, but in my dream, I was sitting on that side and you were sitting on this side and it was really weird. Well, that's fucked up. So I'm glad. It was like mirrored. Everything was so up, mirrored. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. That's pretty fucked up. I know what's wrong with it. It ain't got no gas. <laughs> Have you seen that video of the guy that's like, knock out this cup. It's got a little red truck calling a Christmas tree. He was like, look at all this de these decorations my mom bought me. I just got a little red truck hauling a Christmas tree. Guys, look, it's a little red truck hauling a Christmas tree. It's a Christmas car for my bones. I kept parents. doing that. My dad got this little Christmas tree for his house, and the base of it had like a little red truck hauling a Christmas tree. And I kept saying that, and he goes, Is that from a movie or something? Why do you keep saying that? And I told him about the TikTok video. The last question for the 12 Days of Spookmas is What is your favorite Christmas song? It's time. She she defrosted. She De thawed? Thawed? Defrosted? Is it defrosted a word? No. Yes. Dethawed's not a word. 
Defrost. I thought defrost was no, it's thawed, thawed. out. <laughs> so yeah, defrost is the word. God, <laughs> we are so dumb. All I want for Christmas is you. <laughs> I don't know what my favorite Christmas song is. It's not that one. <laughs> no, I have heard that too many times. I'm dreaming of a big cock. I said white like cock and you said big penis. I used to blow. <laughs> jingle bell, jingle bell, Ooh, jingle like bell fuck. Tis the season to smoke crack. Oh, 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 oh. Do, 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 do. This Christmas feels like the, the very first Christmas, Christmas to me. me. Sleigh bells ring. Are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Silent night. Silent dark. Heart to herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. I don't know the rest of the words. <laughs> I only know that part from Charlie Brown. I don't know the actual song. Dun 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 ding fries are done ding fries are done. At Christmas, I was thinking that Hershey's Kisses. Oh yeah. Where it's like ding 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 ding. I like the Campbell's Soup one. Where the boy comes in as a snowman and then he melts oh, yeah. and he's eating the soup. He's eating soup. Eating soup, you're checking out of soup. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you are up first. On this contestants and Price is Right. This contestant is a little red truck. A hole in a Christmas tree. I forgot there was cats. <laughs> <laughs> But on that note, we wish you a Merry Spookmas Merry and a Christmas. horrifying New Year. And Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else to say. And we will get into Mike's story. My battery's about to die, okay. so this is perfect timing. <laughs> see you later. We'll see you in the New Year. Earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, there is no doubt that the Christmas tree, with its brightly colored decorations, the star on top, and equally colorful presents lying underneath waiting to be opened, is the centerpiece of any house during the holidays. Generations of families make it an annual tradition to gather together, put the tree up, and decorate it. My family decorates on December 10th when my two aunts board the train to come and visit us. So, how did putting a tree in your home become such a popular tradition? The use of greenery to celebrate the holidays dates back to the 15th century when rural English church records indicate that holly and ivy were bought in the winter months. Parishes would decorate a pole with these items, which is believed to have been a precursor to the Christmas tree. Private houses and streets were decorated with holly and ivy during this time as well. The earliest use of evergreen trees, wreaths, and garlands dates back to the ancient Egyptians, Chinese, and Hebrews who believed they were symbols of eternal life. The custom was also popular with pagan Europeans and it survived their conversion to Christianity when they would follow the Scandinavian custom of decorating the house and barn with evergreens during the new year to scare away the devil. With all these various historical roots, it comes as no surprise the Christmas tree is filled with plenty of myths and legends. It is said that Martin Luther, who catalyzed the Protestant Reformation, believed that pine trees represented the goodness of God. Another popular myth is the story of Saint Boniface, who supposedly stopped a pagan human sacrifice by cutting down the oak tree where the sacrifice was taking place. In its place, a fir tree grew with its branches representing Christ's eternal truth. Another version of the legend claims he cut down the fir tree and hung it upside down, which is believed to have led to the tradition of trees being hung upside down to represent the Holy Trinity. But the origin of the Christmas tree as we know it today is believed to have come from 14th century Germany. The main prop of a popular medieval play about Adam and Eve was a paradise tree. This tree was decorated with apples to represent the Garden of Eden, 
which then inspired members of the general public to put up trees in their own house on December 24th, which is the feast day of Adam and Eve. These household trees were often decorated with wafers to represent the Eucharistic host, the Christian sign for redemption. Candles were often added, symbolizing Christ as the light of the world. Another common sight in the German medieval home was the Christmas pyramid, a triangular wooden structure that was decorated with evergreens and a star on the top. The inside of the pyramid had shelves that were used to display figurines. By the 16th century, the paradise tree and the Christmas pyramid had merged together to form the Christmas tree. By the 1800s, this new Christmas tree had become a popular tradition among Lutherans, but it was the Victorians that gave us the Christmas as we know it today. And it all started with one picture. In 1848, the Illustrated London News published a drawing of German-born Prince Albert with his wife, Queen Victoria, and all their children gathered around a giant tree with presents underneath. The scene was reminiscent of Albert's childhood, but little did they know the impact they were going to make. The resulting domino effect was instantaneous, and by 1861, the year of Albert's death, the Christmas tree had become a common sight in many British homes. America, however, was more critical to the new tradition because they believed it was attached to pagan beliefs. The Puritans of New England upheld very strict views on how Christmas should be celebrated. They believed it to be so sacred that attending a church service was the only way to celebrate. Anyone caught decorating in any way was severely punished. This belief continued until Irish and German immigrants began to settle in the area and establish their own traditions despite the Puritan strict beliefs. Pennsylvania, on the other hand, which was largely German in population, would decorate community trees in the late 1800s. And soon after, the German families began putting up trees in their own houses. Much of the country was still skeptical until the drawing of Albert in Victoria was republished in Gaudi's Lady Book in 1850 with a couple alterations. They removed the Queen's crown and Prince Albert's mustache to make it look more American. After this drawing was published, the Christmas tree was more widely accepted. The decorations that adorn these household trees would evolve a lot during this time. At first, they were often decorated with popcorn strung together to form garland, along with cookies, nuts, and berries. Then, in the 1860s and 1870s, Christmas ornaments made of lead or glass, often imported from Germany, started being made. By 1880, they were being sold on the shelves of Woolworths. It was also in this time that the Christmas tree stand was invented to replace the blocks of wood that were used to prop the tree up. But as you might have guessed by now, the Christmas tree makes our list because of one decoration in particular, the lights. The candles on early trees were only lit for about 30 minutes, but obviously if you put naked flame next to wood, there is a good chance a fire will break out, and many did. The fires got to be so bad that insurance companies stopped paying out for accidental tree fires. It was clear something had to be done. In 1882, Edward Johnson, vice president of the Edison Electric Light Company, invented the first electric Christmas tree lights, which he displayed in his own house. Thomas Edison was impressed, and for the next eight years, they refined the design until they had a marketable product. Candles are still used on Christmas trees in, in some parts of Europe, but nowadays electric Christmas lights are the standard in every home. While electric lights are safer than candles, they still aren't without risk. The CPSC estimates that 2,000 injuries occur each year from Christmas decorations. Of that number, 440, or one-fifth, are caused by Christmas tree lights. I think it's safe to assume that most of these injuries were caused by electric shock from frayed wiring or attempting to change bulbs with the light still plugged in, but there's probably some burns from fires mixed in there. According to the National Fire Protection Association, even though Christmas tree fires have followed a distinct downward trend over the past 20 years, there was still 280 fires in 2007, 130 fires in both 2016 in 2017, and most recently, 180 fires in 2020. Furthermore, the NFPA says that 40% of these fires were caused by lights or electricity, one-third of these fires were in the living room den area, another one-third were caused by candles, one-fifth were caused by cooking equipment, and a shocking 24% were intentional. The three worst days for these fires are December 25th, 
the 31st, and January 1st, 1 in 32 being fatal. On average, Christmas tree fires cause $14.8 million in damage every year. But while these statistics are shocking, Christmas trees, just like the hammock, are perfectly safe as long as you use common sense. Never put real candles on your Christmas tree. Keep real trees watered to avoid drying out. Brown dead needles are much more flammable. Don't try to dispose of your tree by putting it in the fireplace. Don't place your tree close to a heat source. Use lights with a UL safety certification. Consider using LED holiday lights as they consume less power and create less heat. Inspect the lights to ensure they are not frayed or torn. Never use electric lights on a metallic tree. Always have a fire extinguisher on hand in the event a small fire does break out.